Hi, this is Justin Orndorff, founder of DVS Baseball, and I wanted to provide a very simplistic look at the timing issue that we see in DeGrom's sequence in his pitch and delivery, and really how to fix it. Uh, is that quite simple? And I think that if we start with first, understanding why it occurs, and then the simple adjustment to no longer have it occur, we'll get exactly where we want to be. And first, I just want to kind of have almost a disclaimer, is we don't know DeGrom's full training program what he's actually trying to do in his delivery. It's not like we're speaking with him and we have a full scope of everything that he's been doing over the last several years. We're just going to be looking at the lens of sequencing and those movements in his sequence that statistically in our model have related to injury risk. And remember, most of the time, the throwing injuries that do occur manifest themselves over a period of time. And in this case, because DeGrom's now had two injuries within a short period of time, he's now probably closer to a major throwing injury on the horizon. So it's one of those things if I'm Jacob DeGrom or I'm the New York Mets, what is the kind of best direction which I need to proceed moving forward to sustain my career if I'm Jacob deGrom or make sure I'm capitalizing on a player or an investment in Jacob deGrom that I've paid to as an organization so I can be successful in terms of becoming a winning organization. So let's get into it and not kind of go through all the, the fine-tuned details of maybe the business side of it. But in terms of the problem itself, I'm gonna back up here a little bit and we see through our model is that pitchers who undergo a prolonged period of shoulder retraction, which would be when the throwing arm comes out of the glove and the elbow starts to extend in this sagittal plane, we can get a little transverse plane, but if it starts to extend as the trunk stays in flexion and this throwing arm starts to extend behind, uh, let's call it the body in this sagittal plane, the capsule is undergoing increased amounts of tension prior to the forearm rotating up into a position to throw the ball, so the, the shoulder externally rotating to throw the baseball prior to foot strike. We see this as a risk factor in the pitch and delivery. So there's varying amounts of this shoulder retraction that occur, and we monitor those amounts of shoulder retraction in our injury risk model. But in DeGrom's case, what you see is, as he comes out of the glove, the trunk will go into flexion, and as it stays in flexion, there's a point at which this occurs in almost every pitch and delivery where the arms will extend out, the trunk's going to be in flexion. We kind of call this the bottom, where the arms are fully extended in the sagittal plane this way. And now my wrists, my elbows, they have to continue to go somewhere. So we want them to extend out and then come back into the center point of the body as I'm moving in the foot strike. In DeGrom's case, in a lot of cases of pitchers, the wrist, the elbows will continue to extend and this is where the elbow, you'll see it extend now behind the back and now I'm starting to get into shoulder retraction. So because the trunk stays in flexion too long. This is where the shoulders want to get into that retraction. Now I'm going to come at you from the front view and I'm going to overlay um, a clip of DeGrom pitching so we can kind of see apples to apples here is that now I'm in flexion coming towards the camera and if I stay there you're going to start to see my elbow pull behind my back here in that sagittal plane and if I go from here and I'm late with my trunk flexion going to extension, my, my elbow has to go somewhere, okay? And it decides to go behind the back into increased uh, periods of tension. Now, if I'm just standing here with a baseball and any person that would just kind of go like this, okay? And let's say in more realistic fashion, I'm here, okay? 
and then I decide to go from this position to this one and I just do this over and over if you just stand here and you feel what type of pressures or sensations you're going to feel in the shoulder capsule you're going to feel tension and that tension just doesn't have to be there prior to you landing in the foot strike and then prior to the trunk and the arm accelerating forward. We don't have to have that increased shoulder capsule tension there um, at all. And so I know that there's a lot of, you know, maybe older methodology about scap loading, but it's quite different from I'm just in here to when then my elbow is drawing behind and extending my capsule and maybe even pulling me more in the transverse plane. But either way, if I go from here and up as this is occurring, that's kind of a lot of tension. And then the shoulder has to kind of stabilize itself. Then I start to accelerate forward. It has to stabilize itself even more. So over time, you can see how the joint integrity of the shoulder might change. It may weaken. It may become more unstable. And I think that's kind of what we're occurring from an anatomical standpoint in the shoulder, and then obviously what we're seeing happen out in the field in terms of setbacks. So the way to get out of this and the way to fix it really doesn't have to change the mechanics as much in terms of how he starts to move into the pitch, but more so about the timing of when the trunk decides to start to move from flexion to extension into foot strike. You probably won't ever see it from the naked eye, but it's something that has to be cued earlier in DeGrom's delivery than it currently is being cued. Now, a lot of maybe skeptics or critics as well, well, he throws 100 miles per hour, he has pinpoint control, will this affect his performance? And we honestly feel like it can only increase his performance because he can actually be more on time because he's not always on time with the forearm in relation to his spine, which just means my forearm in relation to my spine when I'm in foot strike, so we could probably be better there. But ideally what we want to try to happen is the wrist, the elbow, the trunk, they're going to start to move into this extension. Now even if I was like a sidearm pitcher, I'm still moving back up to extension. I may not get all the way here by the time that I land into the ground, but that movement will kind of move and sync up together. And if you look at the Mariana Rivera clip that I've posted in the article below, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. And to kind of bring this all together, the reason why I'm speaking about this is because it's not really something that's just Norda for DVS's pitching methodology. It's built out of our injury risk model that we've been studying for pitchers years upon years. And so if we could just simply remove the additional risk factor out of the Grom's delivery, take it away, maybe we can sustain his level of performance for himself, for the Mets, and for the game of baseball, and really be able to witness one of the best pure pitchers and stuff that we've seen in a long time play out for the next year, two, three, maybe five years. And that's obviously helping the whole game of baseball, and obviously Jacob deGrom and the New York Mets. So maybe this reaches the Grom, and maybe this is a fix that we start to see occur, but overall what we want to be able to see happen is a timing between the flexion of the trunk, the forearm extending up into rotation, into foot strike. We want to see him kind of go in, um, in, in, in sequence there at the same rate and basically not get into those excessive levels of tension. Thank you.